good morning today's class we will be taking up a group of antibiotics called the macrolide antibiotics at the end of this session you will be able to describe the mechanism of action of the macrolide antibiotics name the macrolide antibiotics what are their uses adverse effects and important drug interactions there is no classification as such for the macrolide antibiotics the following are the currently used macrolide antibiotics roxithromycin azithromycin clarithromycin erythromycin which is the oldest macrolide antibiotic and spiramycin these macrolides namely roxithromycin azithromycin clarithromycin and spiramycin are called newer macrolides like we mentioned earlier erythromycin is the oldest macrolide antibiotic the others are referred to as newer macrolide antibiotics the mechanism of action of the macrolide antibiotics is they bind to bacterial 50s ribosomal subunit and interfere with translocation therefore bacterial protein synthesis is interfered with the macrolide antibiotics are bacteriostatic at low concentrations and sidal at high concentrations <clears throat> now these are called macrolides because in their structure chemical structure they have a huge macro lactone ring so the mechanism of action is binding to bacterial 50s ribosomal subunit interfering with translocation and therefore interfere with bacterial protein synthesis static at low concentrations and sidal at higher concentrations erythromycin is the oldest macrolide which is even today used so we will study in detail the pharmacology of erythromycin the spectrum of activity of erythromycin is narrow it is similar to that of natural penicillin if you recall the spectrum of activity of natural or natural penicillin that is more activity against gram positive organisms it also is effective against campylobacter legionella rhamnella gardnerella and mycoplasma why was penicillin not effective against mycoplasma because mycoplasma does not have a cell wall whereas erythromycin is effective because erythromycin acts at the 50s bacterial ribosomal subunit hemophilus dicreae hemophilus influenza chlamydia trachomatis rickettsia these are moderately sensitive to erythromycin like with most antibiotics the bacteria develop resistance to erythromycin which is plasmid mediated by altered 50s ribosomal binding site and also production of an enzyme called erythromycin esterase erythromycin is available as enteric coated tablets meaning erythromycin is acid labile it can be destroyed by gastric acid so it comes as enteric coated tablet widely distributed to most body tissues crosses the placenta but not the blood brain barrier some amount of the active erythromycin is excreted in bile <coughs> the usual dose of erythromycin is 500 mg per oral four times a day for 5 to 7 days the most common adverse effect of erythromycin is epigastric pain and diarrhea now this diarrhea is related to the motilin like activity of erythromycin that is it stimulates the gastrointestinal tract peristalsis and in very rare cases skin rashes and fever it can cause that is erythromycin can cause reversible hearing loss a peculiar form of jaundice called cholestatic jaundice with hepatitis is seen with the estolate salt of erythromycin erythromycin succinate salt is also available an important drug interaction with erythromycin is erythromycin is a hepatic microsomal enzyme inhibitor so if erythromycin is administered with the non sedating antihistaminics like cetrazine 
as elastin, what happens? Erythromycin inhibits the hepatic microsomal enzymes. The plasma levels of the antihistaminic increase and can cause cardiac dysrhythmias. So, erythromycin should not be prescribed with a non sedating antihistamine. Erythromycin, we said the spectrum of activity is similar to natural penicillin, so the uses are similar to natural penicillin. Is the drug of choice for mycoplasma pneumoniae, border to laprotesis, and chancroid. Second line drug in Campylobacter enteritis, Legionnaire's pneumonia, and chlamydial urinary tract infections. As an alternative, if a patient is allergic or hypersensitive to penicillin, then erythromycin can be used as an alternative in streptococcal infections, diphtheria, tetanus, gonorrhea, syphilis, and leptospirosis. Now, the newer macrolides we said are roxithromycin, azithromycin, clarithromycin, and spiramycin. We will see how these macrolides differ from erythromycin. The newer macrolides is by itself a 5 mark test. <coughs> roxithromycin is semi synthetic, longer acting when compared to erythromycin. You remember, erythromycin had to be given 4 times a day, whereas roxithromycin is given twice a day. Better oral absorption and lesser gastrointestinal irritation or diarrhea when compared to erythromycin. Roxithromycin is more potent against cataralis, vaginalis, and legionella infections. That is Brahmanella cataralis, Gardnerella vaginalis, and legionella. Roxithromycin is used as an alternative to erythromycin for respiratory tract infections, ear, nose, throat skin and soft tissue infections. The usual dose is 150 to 300 milligrams twice a day taken half an hour before food. Clarithromycin is effective against atypical mycobacteria like mycobacteria cancers, mycobacterium smegmatis, mycobacterium avium complex. Clarithromycin is also effective against mycobacterium leprae. Helicobacter pylori, Moraxella, Legionella, and Mycoplasma. Approximately 50% of the orally administered drug is administered and is given twice daily. Indications for the use of clarithromycin include respiratory tract infections, pertussis, streptococcal and staphylococcal infections, Mycobacterium avium complex in HIV patients. Clarithromycin is an important part of triple therapy for peptic ulcer because it has activity against Helicobacter pylori and is a reserve drug for leprosy. Adverse effects are similar to erythromycin with better gastrointestinal tolerance. The usual dose of clarithromycin is 250 to 500 milligrams twice a day for 7 days by the oral day. Azithromycin is effective against Haemophilus influenzae, Mycoplasma, there is a spelling correction to be made here, which is Mycoplasma, Chlamydia pneumoniae, Legionella, Moraxella, Haemophilus decayi, Chlamydia trachomatis, Mycobacterium avium complex, and Nysoria, Nysoria gonorrhea. Azithromycin is almost completely absorbed on oral administration and also has intracellular penetration. That is, it can enter again spelling the key is missing macrophages and fibroblast azithromycin has a long plasma half life thus given once daily and is also excreted in pipe <coughs> the usual dose of azithromycin is azithromycin is once daily 500 mg for 3 days used once we know the spectrum of activity you should be able to write the uses for example, Legionnaire's pneumonia, lymphogranuloma venarum, non-specific urogenite infections, donovaniosis, chancroid, and pensilinase producing Nicegia gonorrhea. Azithromycin also used in pharyngitis, tonsillitis, bronchitis, otitis media, sinusitis. These are strepto and staphylococcal infections. A reserve drug for multi-drug resistant tuberculosis type, sorry, multi-drug resistant typhoid and the toxoplasmosis. Adverse effects, nothing very serious here. Gastrointestinal upset, headache and dizziness.
Now the importance of spiromycin is it prevents transplacental transmission of toxoplasma gondii infections. Adverse effects are gastrointestinal irritation, nausea, diarrhea and skin rashes. So, in this topic of macrolide antibiotics, what is required to be known is a 5 mark question, newer macrolide. So, you need to mention the names, roxithromycin, azithromycin, clarithromycin and spiromycin. Mechanism of action to be mentioned, spectrum of activity, uses, adverse effects and important drug interactions. Thank you.